Hi, I'm Sam Sheridan from Sheridan Computers. Today I'm going to go through showing you how to set up um, Zero Tier. Zero Tier is kind of like a VPN, it's a software defined networking environment which will basically allow you to um, install it on your machines and you can remote desktop to your machines as if they're connected to each other. Um, if you'd like to hire us for any projects, please head over to sheridan.co.uk if you click on the Hire Us button. Um, fill out the form, leave some details on what you're looking for and we'll get back to you. Um, while you're on our website, you can also find some details of who we are, what we do and some of the clients that we deal with. Um, now we've got that out of the way, let's head over and take a quick look at Zero to you. So, Zero to you, zero to you .com. Global area networking, easily connect cloud, mobile, desktop and data center resources anywhere. Um, zero to is open source, so um, you can look at the licensing restrictions, we'll go through them in a second. Um, but basically you can deploy it free of charge um, and it'll, under the current circumstances with COVID-19, it's a perfectly acceptable way to access remote your machines at offices or at home via remote desktop um, and it's secure. So if we take a look at the pricing first. So licensing terms, most uses of zero to are free. Uh, they only co require a commercial license if you want to incorporate into a closed source product or offer a profit for service that competes with their own. Um, so free usages include use of zero tier to connect to personal devices, play LAN games with your friends, use zero tier internally as a VPN or SD1 or multi-cloud hybrid cloud networking solution. Um, so, you know, you're quite um, entitled to use it in your work environment, so you can use it to um, connect your work machines together, connect remote workers together and um, use remote desktop that way, which saves a lot of uh, networking configuration as well, especially if you um, routers don't support it properly. Um, it's f You can use it to link or embed zero tier in a free and open source application. You can package zero tier labeled as such and distribute it for free in an app store or other software repository. Request that your user install zero tier by name so they can use it to access a service free or paid and use zero tier to connect and collaborate with other companies out or outside contractors. Um, so the only reason you'll need to purchase a license is, it, like I mentioned previously, if you're going to um, build it into a proprietary device that's not open source, if you're going to run your own um, for-profit service, so if you're going to charge for something that com that's, uh, competes with themselves or is a similar. You can deploy zero to an inactive due to military or intelligence setting will require a commercial license, link or embed zero to a software in a closed source application, rebrand or white label zero to and distribute it with your own application or service, so you're going to pay for that. Um, so as we've covered the licensing terms, this is quite free and it's open source product um, and you're welcome to use it. So we're going to need to go ahead and uh, register account if you've not already got one, so if you click on the myzerotear.com. Okay, so we're logged in. Um, so just briefly go to the download page. So you can see this works with Windows, it works uh, on Mac, it works with Apple iOS, it works with Android, Linux, and uh, even has a free BSD package. So it uh, works with a wide range of operating systems. Um, so you can see free connect up to 100 devices to unlimited networks. Uh, after that, you're gonna have to start paying for it. Um, £29 a month, 24 hour trial, connect unlimited devices to unlimited networks. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is create a network. Okay, so now we're in the uh, create network page, we need to go ahead and create a network. Um, so when you create a network, it automatically creates an ID and gives it a random name. Uh, so when we install a client on the desktop machines and laptops and things are going to need this network ID so we can connect the network. Uh, if we just have a brief look in here. So we've got the network ID. Now if it's set to private, you're going to have to authorize each connection, which I suggest you leave it on that, um, because if it's set to public, anybody with that network ID can connect. Um, manage routes. Um, so that's the LAN settings. We can add routes in if we want. Um, auto assign from range 192.168.192, which refers to this here. And we can change that basically to, we've got plenty of options. Um, we can 
change this to whatever we want. And if we change the IP address that we want, we can do that. So if your network at home is using 192.168.1.0 and the network at work is using like 10 one whatever, um, just pick an IP range that doesn't conflict. You'll usually be okay to leave it on the default, uh, which is 192.168.192 on this case. Um, we can assign our to, uh, IPv6 ranges. Um, we're not going to do that for this. There's no need to do that. But if you're using IPv6, you can do that. Um, you can manually add people in, so we can manually add nodes to it. So no devices have joined the network. Uh, you can basically ignore all this, I'm just going through to show you the settings. And if you want to remove a network, you can scroll down to the bottom. And we have the option to delete the network. Um, if you've got somebody else that's using zero tier as well, it'll give you an internal network ID on the once you've logged in. If you put that in here, you can add the user and give them access to the network as well. So just to read it and join devices or modify and delete. So that's pretty much with your network set up. So once you've got your network set up, um, we go back into networks. So we set up, I've not changed anything. Now we need to download the client on the machines that we're going to join to our network. And as I said, we will need that network ID. So I'm going to go ahead and download the client. So I've got to download Microsoft Windows. So now we get the uh, client setup screen. So let's go ahead and install. I'm doing this on my computer in the office. Um, and I'll connect my computer at home so I can demonstrate exactly how it works. So the setup is complete, nice quick install, let's go ahead and launch it. So now we have the uh, zero t installed, um, you can't see the icon, bear with me one second. Okay, to move my um, taskbar so you can see the icons. So we've got the zero t icon here. We can right click that and we need to join network. We click join network, this box will appear and we need to go back and get our network ID. Just copy and paste that. So now we've joined the network, we can do show networks. And down here, as you can see, it says access denied to the network. Now this is because we need to go into our network and we need to authorize it. Um, so some work we'll go ahead and authorize it. So we've authorized it and as soon as we ticked off as you can now see it says okay. And we've got the managed IP range 192.168.192.168. So we need to go ahead and um, do this on the computer that we have at home. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Um, okay, so I'm now um, remote desktop onto my computer at home, so we're going to go ahead and download it on here. Microsoft Windows installer, save, go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. So this is our computer at home. So let's go ahead, 
give it a name and let's go ahead and authorize it. And as you can see, status is now gone to OK. And we can see our IP address 192.168.192.172. If we go back into the control panel, we can see both of the IP addresses of our machines. Let me go ahead and try and ping the other one. So I want to ping my computer at home 192.168.192.172. Um, so I can't ping that, and it's because of the um, security settings. So I'm going to personal firewall, edit, edit my trusted zone, one nine two dot one six eight dot one nine two dot zero four twenty four. And I do the same on my work PC. So we put the network range in there. Um, this is where you might have issues if you've got firewall software on your machine, as I have. So that's done, so now we should be able to ping. And we can ping, so now we'll be able to establish a remote desktop. Um, if you're not using, like I'm using ESET, as you can see there, um, if we need to adjust the Windows firewall settings, then we need to go into a control panel. Going to Windows Defender Firewall. We need to go into Advanced Settings, and we need to allow that route in as well. So we go Inbound Rules, New Rule, Custom, All Programs, Any, and which remote ad addresses does does this apply to? So we're going to need to um, stick that in there. And we do. Um, so then we'd put the network in. Um, so once you've got your network range in there, you can do click, click next, and allow the connection in the networks you want to apply it on. Give it a name. And that's how you'd do it if you wasn't using ESET endpoint security. So once you have your firewall rules in place, then um, we should be able to ping probably. As you can see, we can that way, so we need to make sure that we can ping my home computer from my um, work computer. So as you can see, that's now working, and I can ping in both directions. If I can ping in both directions, then um, more than likely the remote desktop will work. So I need to go ahead and enable remote desktop on my home computer. Go ahead and type this, go into your start menu, go to this PC, right click and do properties. Remote settings. And I want to allow remote connections to this computer. If you're on a domain, you're going to have to select users and type the and add basically the uh, domain users in we're not on a domain um, okay so now remote desktop is enabled on my home computer so we should be able to remote in so if I go to remote desktop connection And I put the IP address in of my home machine. We should be able to go ahead and connect to this. And as you can see, it's asking for the password. So 
So I'll pop up with a certificate warning. Basically from here you can just click yes. Um, if you don't want the certificate warning to keep appearing, you can go to view certificate. Install a certificate and it won't ask again. And then you can do not ask again for a remote connection to this computer, if that's what you want. And I'm now remote desktops into my computer. So as you can see, it's quite easy to set up zero uh, zero tier and set up the um, software defined networking. You can use this to um, create uh, private networks between your office, between your home users. It's not restricted to remote desktop. You can use it for multiple purposes. Um, I hope this video helps. You may have a few issues with firewalls. Um, as I say, I've shown you how to do it with ESA and the built-in Windows firewall. If you're using a third-party firewall, then you're going to have to allow the um, private network range. Once you've done that, you should have no issues and you should be good to go. So I hope this video helps, especially in the current um, climate of what's going on with COVID-19 and um, everybody being restricted to their houses uh, and working from home. So if you want to hire us, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, head over to our website at sheridan.co.uk, click on the hire us form, fill it out and we'll get back to you.